Hello everyone, it's Friday. Welcome to Rose and Carter. Do the JOB. Um, it's normally tag team day, but we, we kind of fucked up the dates and I missed one and all sorts of shit went on. So uh, it's singles wrestler day. Uh, Bully Boy's pick of John Nord, not Scott Norton that I thought he said, but John Nord, who later became the Berserker. Any reason why? Not really. I don't even know why I thought of uh, John. <laughs> He's probably, I could pick like, you could put 500 fucking names on a list and he wouldn't be even on it. Like, you know, really like who I would, who you think I would pick, but I just went again for a, a total fucking random one. And, uh, he's as random as they come any really. So, um, I, I wanted to do, you know, before we, we kick off on John Nord, I saw this thing on Facebook just, and it had six pictures of wrestlers that were named Rick. Have you seen it? No, I hadn't seen that. There's there's Rick Rude, Ricky yeah. Morton, Rick Flair, Rick Steiner, Ricky Steamboat, and Rick Martel. And it oh, says right. at the top, one must go. Which one would you eliminate? I've written my pick down so because I really reckon you'll say the same pick as me. Right, let me run through them again. Right. Rude. Yeah. Morton, Flair, Steamboat, Steiner, Martel, all Ricks. One's got to go. It's got to be Steiner, isn't it? Da da. <laughs> Same as me. That's what I said. But I mean, nothing against Rick Steiner, but he don't fucking hold shit to any of the others, does he? To be honest, for me. That was a probably one of the easiest fucking like thing multi choice things I think I can I don't yeah. think it's even close for me. Like I think Steiner was fucking brilliant. He was a hell of an athlete, like you know what I mean? And the Steiners are fucking legendary, aren't they? But yeah. from a from a personal point of view, yeah. It yeah. would be Steiner every time. As soon as I saw it, I thought you'll pick exactly the same. So that's that's the reason why I thought I'd bring it up, really, to be fair. I didn't reply to the fucking um, picture on Facebook, but, you know, it was a no-brainer. It, it's got to be him. And, uh, you know, it's not even that I don't like him in any way. He's fucking, like you said, he's great, but yeah. you don't old shit compared to um, mm. John Nord was born John Eric Nord, October the 18th, 1959, which makes him 60, in St. Cloud, Minnesota. He was trained by... Eddie Sharkey, obviously. Right. According to... Um, he debuted in 1984 and retired in 2003. How about this for a debut, right? He debuted in 84 as the Barbarian, bear in mind. Um, but I suppose back then, the Barbarian that we know of, as in, you know, Ed Shrinker's the only Barbarian, Powers of Pain mm-hmm. Barbarian, you could nick, you know, in in territories, you could nicknames from other territories, couldn't you? Because the, the, you know, what I see as the proper barbarian would have still been pretty green in '84, mm. and in another territory. So it, it wasn't like you had the internet and you could just fucking read what's happening elsewhere. You knew, yeah. you know, if you were south, you knew what was happening in the mid south and not really anywhere else. So yeah, to them. Barbarian, but it, it, yeah, he debuted as the Barbarian in fucking Mid South. Imagine debuting f- for Bill Watts. Imagine being totally new <laughs> for Bill Watts with his reputation as being a fucking you know hard nosed booker slash promoter. It's mad that, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny because I was saying that the other day. Like he looked really green, like really new when I seen him on that WWE like DVD. Um, thinking, fucking hell, he can't have been around long at that point. That must have been the mid-80s, like, so, fucking hell. Jumping into the deep end there, weren't he? Well, well that um, WrestleFest that we saw was 85, weren't it? So only, like, you know, probably less than a year into the job, like. He mm. was managed by Skandar Akbar in Mid-South, which would have helped him, you know, because Akbar was pretty established. I'll have a talker. Yeah. Um, 85 went to the AWA. Originally in the AWA, he was promoted as a member of the New Jersey Generals of the United States Football League, even though he wasn't a fucking footballer. 
but I suppose it was just a publicity stunt, wasn't it? Um, in 1986, he became Nord the Barbarian. You disappeared, Paul. Oh, he's back. Yeah. Um, it, sorry, it, my, my fucking uh, I th- my phone. It said like on hold, and then like it said my brother was ringing, so I just fucking hung up on him. It's <laughs> that's why it went on hold. <laughs> I thought it was something you done, but no, it was uh, someone ringing. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> right. So, New Jersey General, which United States Football League, is how he was promoted in the AWA before he started wrestling there, even though he wasn't a footballer. 86, he became Nord the Barbarian, again managed by Akbar, and he frequently teamed by Brody, who he said was an influence on him at the time. Bear yeah. in mind now, he's two years into the job. And he was part of the triple main event of Wrestle Rock 86. And Wrestle Rock 86 was a pretty big thing for the AWA, so that's pretty cool. 87 went to World Class, still as Nord the Barbarian, managed by Gary Hart. So he's always had a manager with him, hasn't he? Um, yeah. Being in World Class, obviously he was wrestling Kevin Von Erich for their version of the world title, which happened at the fourth David Von Erich Memorial Show, Parade of Champions. That was another fucking big event, right? 89 to 91, back in the AWA, where he was with Yurkon John, teaming with Scott Norton, who we should have been doing today, I think. <laughs> 91, he was up in Portland for a little bit, where he tagged with the Grappler as the Breakfast Club. Fucking random name, isn't it? Uh, 91 to 93, which was probably his most popular period, like he's most famous for. Um he went to the WWF originally as the Viking, but then there was some sort of name dispute and other people were using the Viking name elsewhere and then Vince got a bit of a bollock in print, so he changed it to the Berserker. Managed by Mr. Fuji. 94 and 96, he was in All Japan. 97 to 98, he was in WCW, where he was managed by Barry Darso, independence in between. Believe it or not, he was Pro Wrestling Illustrated's Rookie of the Year in 1985. So yeah. that must have been based purely off potential, not fucking talent at the time. Surely he'd be blown. Um, yeah. He's had several DUI issues. He's on a five-year probation, which was talked down from a four-year prison sentence last year. Um, and he currently has something called amyotropic lateral sclerosis which means he's bound to a wheelchair and living in an assisted uh, living facility. Bless him, he's only 60. Oh, wow. But yeah, might be because of the piss, though, because he's got fucking several DUIs. You yeah. know, who knows? Mm. So, four matches of John Nord. What was your first, mate? All right, hang on then. Here we go. They're all fucking short ones, I'll tell you that much. Couldn't find many long ones. I I had one really good one, one really shit one, and then two with moody finishes like DQ and fucking count outs. That was my breakdown of the four. Yeah, you probably uh you might have picked one or two that I've got, but the first one I've got is from the twenty second of March nineteen eighty five against Shawn Michaels. Yours is the very first then, because mine don't start till eighty six. Right, yeah, this is, uh, like, I mean, what fucking, what year did Sean start then? No idea. Because he, he wouldn't have been around that long. He was like a fucking job guy. Yeah, weren't he in Mid-South, really? Like, realistically, he wasn't fucking... On, on YouTube when I was searching through him, to be fair. And, uh, yeah, he's all trunked up, and he, rather than, you know, he wasn't like a rocker or fucking anything close to it. He was just, you know, yeah. a lad. Yeah. Just a young fucking lad. Like, it looked like a, just a young local lad, really, that they fucking brought in kind of thing. But anyway, yeah, the match itself was fucking really, really short. Like, fucking way under five minutes. I'm saying two or three minutes. And uh, jump to start by the fucking barbarian. Basically, I've put beats the fuck out of him. Takes his ear off with a clothesline and beats him with a full Nelson. That is literally like the match. Like, like a submission Nelson or a knockout of full Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes the head off and then fucking picks him up, puts him in the full Nelson, and Sean taps out a squash match. Um, I guess they were just 
building in weren't they as the fucking like a monster and um this was the perfect fucking example because sean had no offense and he looked fucking really impressive didn't john nord on this one to be fair that finish finish then because that wrestle fest that we saw when he was on with brickhouse brown he did the full house didn't he i couldn't yeah. make out what it was fucking funny angle but yeah yeah so that finish so mm. my first one's the year after may the third 86 from the AWA, this, um, and it's versus Sergeant Slaughter. Sheik oh. Adnan Al Case is, um, is the manager of the Barbarian here, Nord the Barbarian, who, oddly, later became General Adnan, but was with fucking Sergeant Slaughter in WWF. Oh, um, yeah. On this, they're advertising some big show. I can't remember what it was. It could have even been that Wrestle Rock one, but like they've got some fucking. Considering this was like towards the dying days of the AWA, like you know, it only had like four or five years left, didn't it? But they were advertising Tiger Mask coming in against Book Zoom Off. Fuck Book Zoom Off. We don't want to talk about that fucking pedo con. But you know, Tiger Mask being there is pretty fucking spectacular, isn't it? For '86. Yeah. And Wyndham and Rotunda against the Fabulous Ones. That would have been worth a fucking bash, wouldn't it? Um, mm. So the star is all like fucking very, very punchy, this match is. But a fucking bob on dropkick from Sergeant Slaughter right to the schnoz. Uh, plenty <laughs> of chance going on. Um, oh, you know that fucking Sarge gets posted and he hits the post frontwards and goes boing? Like, yeah, yeah. Him do that. Sometimes he goes out the ring with it, doesn't he? But he does that, and it looks fucking amazing. Um, yeah. The finish, it looks like Brody's winning after the heat, right? Everything's fucking going Brody's way. Sarge reverses the whip. He's all on the attack now, fucking washing lines and fucking all sorts of attack. Um, Nord goes over the top, so it looks like a DQ, right? You know, like it's going to be one of their moody victories where Sarge gets the DQ. Um Nord, Nord manages to get back onto the apron. No DQ, right. Nord manages to get back on the apron and the Cobra clutch, clutch goes on, but he's on the apron. So you think, now is it going to be a count now? It was a DQ. Now is it going to be a count now? Turns out Brody hits the ring, attacks Sergeant Slaughter, and it's a DQ. Fuck me, they teased that one for a, like, the actual finish was longer than the fucking match itself. But yeah, it was quite enjoyable. It was all right, like, can't knock it. What's next? Cool. Oh, my next one is from the AWA and it's against Jake Milliman. Oh, Jake the Milkman. Yeah. Jake the Milkman Mill. Love him. The- Never heard of him. Never heard of him. To be honest. Fucking legendary. He, he yeah. wrestled uh, Colonel Spears. At one point, AWA didn't have a crowd or anything. They did it from a studio and like superimposed the fucking crowd on. Um, uh-huh. Which was of Garnier's fucking ideas, like, of, of modernising wrestling. And, uh, yeah, he wrestled uh, Colonel Bro- uh, Colonel De Beers in some match where a turkey was on a pole or some shit like that. Fuck yeah, that, yeah. that was most noted for. But he did WWF TV and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Eddie Sharkey was the referee in here as well. I don't think I've ever seen Eddie Sharkey with my eyes. I wouldn't know what he looks like. No, neither would I. And the only reason I know that is because, like, the announcer said, like, they just said referee Eddie Sharkey. So um, I found that quite um, bizarre. But, yeah. Um, He's from that way, isn't he? Because they, they all yeah. were, weren't they? Yeah. All that so. The Roods and the fucking LOD and, and Smash and stuff. They're all from that way. The AWA yeah. way. So, um, yeah, jump jump start and fucking in fact milliman actually jumps fucking nord but nord is like not really fucking it's not really affecting him because like he's just fucking massive any so he's just fucking no effect in there um it's a bit of a squash to be fair and also like it's kind of funny because i'd, I'd never heard of milliman but like he wasn't fucking he, he wasn't fucking selling much like <laughs> <He'd> fucking, <laughs> Nord would fucking behead him with a big boot or something, and he bumps obviously, 
But he ain't for fucking staying down. He was fucking feeling quite froggy, to be fair. And he was up and fucking same again with a fucking line. And then like <laughs> he beat him with the fucking inverted back breaker, you know, when he's on his shoulder. Um, yeah. Kind of like a fucking, like a submission. But, you know, like lying on his shoulder with it on his back. You know what I mean? Kind of like a yeah. torture rack, but instead of going across, it's like going that, you know. But, um, yeah, and he beat him with a submission there. And um, he kept it on him for, like, a lot longer than the fucking referee, like, signaled. I think he might have been saying, you know, it might have been a bit of a fuck you kind of thing for not selling for me or something like that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, uh, yeah it, was, it was all right. But, yeah, no, nothing special, to be, to be honest. Right, next up, WWF. How about this one? So we have the Berserker now with I've Mr. Fuji. Feeling, I've got a feeling that I've probably done this one, but I'll carry on. It's January the 6th, 92. Oh, no, just a month okay. before mine. Right, January the 6th, 1992. Uh, Berserker with... Mr. Fuji, um, who used to be the Barbarian, against the Barbarian. Two oh, heels. I, I did see this one, but I didn't pick it. Yeah. Two heels. Very hard to watch. Yeah. Barbarian, as in the Barbarian, being yeah. more basic, to be fair in this. Um, both were managed by Fuji at some point or another. Both got fluffy boots on. Both were called the Barbarian. There's lots of fucking similarities here. Um, yeah. Typical man start, you know, punchy, punchy tackles. Uh, three tackles from the Barbarian. Nord with a big boot took his fucking ear off. Um, he <laughs> on bar, which was odd, really fucking odd to see, like Barbarian, baby face salad. All of a sudden, Barbarian with a boot, see? Furry boots, both barbarian, both managed by Fuji, both do big boots. Uh, off the ropes goes barbarian, low bridge from Fuji using the cane, out goes barbarian, fucking uh, barbarian chases Fuji around the ring, Fuji gets in the ring, and the referee calls the match off. Looks like because Fuji's in the ring, it's a fucking disqualification. Turns out, um, Barb stands in the middle of the ring all baby faced like he's fucking won something. Uh, turns out Barb's been counted out. I don't know the rules. That's the second moody finish of the day. Wow. What you got now? All right. Uh, my next one is... I'm on my third now, and I? Yeah. So my next one is the Berserker against the Big Boss Man from right. 17th of February, 92. Um... Trying to see what I've got here. Um, good little shine by the boss, man. He goes for a fucking avalanche type shit in the corner. Fucking berserker moves, and that's the cut off there. Boom. Um, Which is the face showing we've seen against anyone against Nord, isn't it? You are so. Like he's always been all over everybody else so far, isn't it? We've, we've done four matches so far, and this is yeah. the first one. Face showing, isn't it? Yeah, pretty. Pretty much, because the fucking first two had nothing, <laughs> nothing on him. So yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was only a little shine. My, my sergeant barbarian were just kind of punchy and tackles and shit. So nothing, not a shine as such. So yeah, he put barbarian over. Not barbarian, boss man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually really like. I thought this match was decent. Actually, um, I mean. Like the actual, they go into he goes for a big splash off the second rope, uh, Berserker. But like the finish, like there's no like big comeback as such. It's just like a fuck up by Berserker. Then they kind of go into the finish. So he, he misses a big splash from the second rope. Bossman moves, and then Bossman like Berserker feeds to the ropes. Bossman runs and gives him a fucking line, and he does like the old fucking Foley one, you know, where they both go over. So they're both out the ring, getting counted out. Fucking boss man's, like, boss man's feeding towards the ring post on the outside of the ring, you know what I mean, like on the floor. Fucking berserker charges him. He just eats an elbow. Boom. 
fucking boss man rolls in on like nine and like there's the count out. So it was a count out, but it was a decent count out finishing. And... Pretty good build to it, wasn't it? Yeah. Would you say that's the best one of the four you watched? Or is the next one better still? Uh, nah, my next one's wank, to be fair. <laughs> so it was boss man your favourite? Yeah, the next one is, uh, I was gutted about the last one. Well, I say wank. My, my uh, last one is, to be fair, but my next one is really good. It's my favourite one, and I didn't think it would be. I watched it more for comedy value than in, anything else, but it's actually my favourite of the four I watched. Yeah. From New Japan, which is fucking rare for me to watch New Japan, but I do like it when there's, you know, like Americans on in Japan. February yeah. the 3rd. 94, right. John with Stan Hansen as his teammate against the Patriot a la Dal Wilkes and right. Johnny Ace fucking John Laryngitis fucking hell you know I, I didn't quite know what to expect I just thought it'd be fucking Hansen and Nord beating the piss out of fucking good old fucking John Laryngitis and John Laryngitis as in the brother of Animal and the the Husband of the mother of the Bella Twins, fucking um, the joined in progress when there's heat on Johnny Ace. Hansen is literally beating the piss out of Johnny Ace. To be fair, Patriot runs round and chops Hansen on the back with a big fucking double chop. Like Hansen doesn't know where he came from. It was just like fucking bam that across the fucking back. <laughs> <laughs> Hansen turns like no how was it and turns around as if to say the fuck. <laughs> uh, Nord looks just like he did in the AWA, like best part of ten years before this, like you know, after his WWF run. Um, it is fucking really odd. The Patriot proper gets some fucking moves in on Hanson. Now I I thought Hanson would have been like fucked out. I ain't doing that kind of shit. But four hours and slap on fucking Stan Hanson, top rope shoulder on Stan Hanson. Double tackle to Nord, double team in Stan, Stan Anson, fucking suplex, double suplex and fucking double tackles and shit. Like they're both getting fucking potted all around. Them. Like the, the most I've seen Nord move ever, and Hansen like just taking all sorts of shit. Uh, Ace and Nord are outside the ring. Patriot knocks Nord off the apron, kaposh, into a suplex from Stan. Uh, post. Fucking Patriot, Stan runs, boot to the face to Stan, Patriot charges, but Larry oh! from um from Stan Hansen and it's fucking game over. But I fucking I really enjoyed it. I really did. I was fucking pleasantly surprised by how much I popped for this good. And a long one as well, like well, the longest one of, of these four. Right, okay. Last fuck fest. Right, my last one, as I say, was wank, and it, <laughs> when I tell you what the fucking match is, you probably won't be surprised. But it's uh from January '98, thirty first of January '98, John Nord versus Evan Courageous. Right, okay. <laughs> it was the. Why it was yourself. Mine's not much better, so. <laughs> well, I went for this because up until recently, I never knew John Nord had been in WCW. I like literally didn't have any clue. So, I, I fuck. I put this on, and fuck me, the size difference. Like, there's size difference, but there's a fucking size difference here. And John didn't Nord, look, you know, didn't he look fucking the best he'd ever looked in WCW? Who, John Nord? I was just about to say, he looked like a fucking absolute beast, didn't he? Like, Proper fucking ripped to shit, tanned, you know, like yeah. just his moustache, having that fucking hairy ass beard, shorter hair, look, look fucking just the ticket. Yeah. Um, but it was 10 years too late, wasn't it? Yeah, but he looked fucking brilliant. And um, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, um, I just put, literally, I put, it was wank. But I actually think it started okay. Like, it, and there was some real, like, awkwardness towards the end. I didn't think anyone knew what the fuck they were meant to be doing. And um, it's like, he, 
yeah, so it's, it kind of started with fucking, he's, he's given, like, Evan the heat, and then, like, he's not really had much in the match, like, Evan hasn't. So, if you can imagine, I don't know what the fuck this was meant to be, but Evan was kind of taking the heat, and he was, like, facing the fucking, like, all dead in the corner, like, facing the fucking turnbuckles kind of thing. Now, John Nord throws him, like, backwards, as if he's going to just take a massive back bump. But, like, Evan kind of does a backflip um, and lands on his feet. But I'm not really too sure if he, <laughs> if he actually did land on his feet or if he just took a fucking backflip, like, bump. Because I have no I have fucking idea. He got up. So if he did take a big bump, then he definitely shouldn't have been getting up. But he got up on his feet. So I think he was meant to land on his feet. And then that's where the awkwardness kind of started they didn't know who the fuck was doing what who was doing what and then like he hits him with a he fucking hits a big boot but the big boot didn't get anywhere near his face it was more like a fucking almost in the dick because they didn't really know what the fuck was happening and then he hits him with a Samoan drop and then he beats him with a camel clutch for the fucking like submission so it's like three submission wins um is it three? Yeah, three submission wins out of the four matches. All different submissions as well in the space of like fucking 13 years or whatever. Mm. But um, I did put that Nord looks like a fucking monster though. Like he just really looked impressive to be fair. But the, the main thing I've written at the bottom of this next match that I watched was looks great, worst match, which it was. Yeah. Also. January the 17th, 98, from WCW Saturday Night against Liz Mark Jr. Liz <laughs> Mark Jr. Good old Liz Mark. Liz Mark Jr. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of choice, WCW singles match-wise, because there's a lot of um, tagging with Barry Darso, but not a lot of singles matches. Um, yeah. I thought the best he'd ever looked. The start was just... Everything was a switch off the ropes. It was, you know, going in off the ropes. Somebody switched it. Some ducking stuff. Some throwing stuff. Some Owen drop cut off. This is really odd. John Nord is fucking 18 stone heavier than Liz Mark Jr. Yet off the ropes goes Liz Mark Jr. And John Nord throws a drop kick and, and like, Liz Mark holds on and fucking... Surely it's Liz Mark that should be doing the drop kicking, not fucking John Nord. I'd have thought. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a springboard drop kick from Liz Mark, which was nice, to be fair. Like, you know, outside in, one of them ones. And then there's a recovery from Nord. He throws him off the ropes. Liz Mark jumps to the middle inside the ring to come round for, like, the crossbody. But he misses the rope altogether and sort of bumps on his arsehole. Um, the finish, I was confused to fuck as to actually what to call this move. It looks like he's going to pole drive him. Liz Mark Jr. is uh, uh, Nord's going to pole drive Liz Mark Jr. He pulls him up for the pole driver, but like halfway up, Liz Mark Jr. goes up as if he's going to get power bombed. But Nord doesn't get him there. So he's kind of just holding him in limbo now, like halfway. Like, does he lift him up and carry on with a power, with a power bomb, or does he go down with him for a fucking pole driver? So he just kind of holds him there for a little bit as if to say, fuck, I'm not quite sure what to do. And then he just drops to his knees um, and then yeah. puts that, camp, you know, like Steiner or recliner type thing, same as the last match. But right. that was yeah. the shit. My <laughs> favorite was. All Japan, 94, Hanson, uh, John, Lauren, uh, Laryngitis, and and The Patriot. That was my fave. I'd watch that again. Yeah. Your fave, The Boss Man. Yeah, I thought that would be decent. I was, you know, I was a big Boss Man fan anyway. And uh, I thought that, you know, I thought they were capable of putting on a, you know, a decent one compared to the others. Like, none of the others were really stood out for me because the first two were squashes anyway, pretty much. Um, and the last one was fucking wank. So it wasn't really hard for the boss man to be the best one, to be fair. But, um, but yeah, so there, there we have it. But, um, fucking Barbet, John Nord, fabulous pick. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I will say this, though. Like, I know a lot of people like, see, I was thinking earlier today, like a lot of people shit on the berserker gimmick and that and, 
people always say that I hear now that like, you know, it was like a fucking Brody clone or whatever, but like two things I can say about that. Like the first thing is apparently like he had Brody's like blessing because like they were like close and he like when he was breaking in, like Brody like helped him out a lot. So it was a lot of the shit that on, on the matches on there. There's lots of matches either against Brody or teaming with Brody. So yeah, they were clear. So he wasn't doing it to like be a cunt. He was like literally he had get, been given like his blessing apparently to do that berserker thing. And also when I was a kid, like I'm, I'm thinking back to like 92, 93 when he was around or whatever it was, 91, 92. Like, I grew up a WWF fan, and back then I had no fucking idea who Bruiser Brody was. Never heard the name in my life until years later, because obviously all I see is what's packaged by the WWF to the fans. You know what I mean? So if I'm not watching, if I'm I'm not a kid fucking watching Japanese wrestling, am I at fucking ten years old? So like, I only know of what WWF was fucking, you know, putting out there. So back then it was like fucking out. Look at this guy. Like, you know, so. The way I see it as well, if people are still shitting on it to this day, there's clearly something in their mind. The berserker is still in their head, which whether they liked it or they didn't, if it's in their head, it's done the fucking job, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter what they're saying about you. As long as they're saying something, they haven't forgotten oh. you. So, you know. He's got, he's got them talking and people still mention this fucking finish, throw them over the fucking top rope and shit like that for the counter. Like, you know. Um, There's several gimmicks that people shit. Doink's one of them. Like, you know, people shit on Doink, doink, but they always bring him back for the fucking big roars, don't they? They always fucking, you know, people always imitate him. People always shit on him, but they're always, you know, they're always talking about him. So who gives a fuck what they're saying? Um, Exactly. Spidey. Monday, we're doing Mark Rocco. Three matches thereof. Uh, Yes. Mark of Respect 4. Uh, Wednesday, the TV show of Pro Wrestling This Week from 87. And f- next Friday, Tag Day, with the Batten Twins. Right varied week there, a bit of all sorts there. Um, have a good weekend, everyone. See you Monday. There we are.